Hey viewers, welcome to another game of Casual Pro Gamer. Today we are doing a game between uh, ST Life on the bottom right in, as the Zerg player and Liquid Taija as the Terran in the top left. It has been quite a while since I've been, done my last cast but um, I thought I'd start off with something cool. And this is a best of seven as you can see here and um, it is the finals of... I forgot what the... Dreamhack? Yeah, Dreamhack Open 2013. So this is the finals and we're going to do all of the games. So up to seven games here. Uh, hopefully all today. But um, if I can't finish it today, which is likely, then uh, we will move on to tomorrow. It all depends of course on how long the games last and how much time I still have left. Uh, yeah, I don't really know, to be honest. But we'll see, I'll try to get as far as I can and then um, post whatever is left tomorrow. So we are starting off with a normal supply depot. A little bit of an extracted trick, you could see that earlier. And we are of course building just the Overlord. And we're going not into any tech for now, but we are going into the normal build. Um, <clears throat> expansion will come up in a moment, I have to assume. Oh yeah, it's over here now. Um, I kind of used to uh, to get things in the top right, so I was looking. Mm -hmm. Where's where's our mineral count? But yeah, it is in the the bottom now, and um, we will indeed see the fast expansion. Well, not fast expansion, but the expansion, the normal expansion for uh, the Zerg player, and then the fast expansion for the Terran player, because the Zerg player always expands first. There is really yeah, only one reason to go for uh, Zerg without an expansion and that's if you're playing against another Zerg and you're on a really small map and you want to surprise the other guy, basically. Anyhow, Barracks coming up now and we will see that the spawning pool will come up as well. There is the spawning pool and we are going to get our first gas. So, um, first gas means our gas, well, kind of simultaneously with the spawning pool means that we're probably going to speed straight away and um, that means yeah three workers on that you will have a hundred uh, gas by the time the spawning pool pops you will immediately be able to research that speed and therefore get some nice speedlings out by the time they reach the enemy base and um, of course speedlings are very good against anything that you put against them except for marines hiding behind the barricade of supply depot barracks but yeah well you get the point it is still pretty strong so um yeah the command center is coming up the hive or sorry uh, hatchery is also up and we once again have a new visual on that so yeah well they keep changing that i don't know why uh i like the old one but i guess we have a new one now anyhow um yeah i'm not sure what to talk about there is the speed uh, he stopped mining, which means that he's going to go just for the normal build for the rest. Just that that early speed is uh, is very valuable. Uh, unfortunately, it did get scouted. Well, not the fact that he got speed, but the fact that he had multiple links. Normally, we see two links coming out to deal with this uh, this scouting SCV. And that is about it. But we are going to see that four links are up. And that means normally that there are more links going up, but for now, yeah, he is just sticking with the four. And is the SCV actually going to get out? It might actually be able to run back to base, but it all depends on whether the Zerglings can, well, keep chasing. But yeah, well, with four Zerglings, it's probably going to die. Um, yeah, no, it's not. Wow, it actually survived at 5 HP. Four circlings should normally be enough, but he only had three following it. I thought there were two on top of each other, just coincidental. But that was not the case. The fourth one just uh, took another path or something like that, or did something else. It scouted around the map, maybe. I don't know. I didn't really pay <laughs> that much attention to it. Anyway, we are going to get a um, patrolling marine here just to prevent this overlord from coming in. And it will be able to do that on its own. Uh, it will be able to shoot it down when it's about here, so it will see everything. But uh, it's kind of a hefty price to pay for that little bit of scouting information that doesn't really reveal this factory even. Uh, he is going to do it then, 
Uh, second marine coming up, meaning that it won't even see that much of the base. It won't even see this uh, supply or sorry uh, extractor refinery. Uh, yeah, but it does see the command center, I believe. Let's see. We can actually see what he saw. Um, at least we should be able to. Yeah. Um, so no. Oh, we have so many people in this game. Oh, uh, here. This is what the one player sees. And, oh my god, I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. Uh, control, okay. I think this is the other guy. So yeah, he did see that there was a command center and he saw this barracks, but that's about all he saw. So uh, yeah, not really interesting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people in this game because they have a lot of uh, people, well, commenting on these games live. And then, of course, you have just the normal spectators like the judges and things like that. Um, yeah, well, all of them apparently are really in this replay. So, I don't know why, because, well, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, it does give everyone the opportunity to, um, to see it, well, the, the action from their own perspective. And do whatever they want. Um, yeah, we are. We do have three queens out. Uh, well, just in the front. That means that there are probably some queens out in the back as well. Yeah, he does have queens with his hatcheries as well. But the three queens are just there for. Uh, well, one of them is for this hatchery, but for the creep spread. Creep spread, of course, one of the major things that you want to do as Zerk, because well, on the creep you get bonus uh, attack speed. Uh, attack no, movement speed. Sorry. Attack speed, probably not. Uh, as well as vision, and vision of course is uh, very, very important in this game. Well, in any game really. Evolution Chambers coming up, they are going to wall off this front. Uh, not entirely of course, but with a few queens you can easily defend this. And that's exactly what he's trying to, uh, to accomplish, to make these, um, these big gaps a little bit smaller, to make it a little bit easier to uh, well, to defend and to actually control the map. Uh, of course, we do have another hatchery coming up here. That is base number four, where we have three bases for the Zerg pl uh, Terran player. That means they're about equal. Terran player needs to be one, uh, well, only one below the Zerg player. So the Zerg player needs to be one up, basically, to, um, to have a similar economy. That is, of course, because the Zerg units kind of are suicidal in nature. And they, um, yeah, they kind of uh, use a lot of resources by just being there. By, I mean, these guys are going to suicide in and then kill some marines, but the marines mostly stay alive. So even though the circlings are cheaper than marines, the circlings die sooner. So yeah, there's that. Anyhow, uh, we do have creep threat going on and going on and going on, and that is just the way we want it. But yeah, of course, this is going to stop that. Uh, he did cancel the making of those creep tumors, which means that he still has four life ones. And that means that um, he can try again in a moment, as long as he... Uh, yeah, as long as he's, uh, he's cautious with that, he can actually get the creep spread going, even though there is an army at the front, uh, well, front door, I guess. He's not going to cancel this time. I'm just going to say, well, okay, it'll die, no problem. We are going to go in, and the Zerg player just reacting by getting all of his, uh, wow, all of his Zerglings and Banelings in there, but then, um, yeah, the Medivax just overhead, just picking up a bunch of these, uh, these Marines, and yeah, no problem for the rest. So, of course, they are all going to drop, they're going to heal again, and yeah, the overall resources lost should be pretty equal. Yeah, it is pretty equal. Zerg lost a little bit more, but as I said, they have one more base to compensate for that. So all in all, should be good. The uh, resources lost, by the way, should be about equal. It's not like Zerg should be, uh, yeah, like 25% ahead or something like that in resources lost or have 25% more resources lost to be equal, no, no, it should be about equal. It all works out in the end. Uh, anyway, the uh, Binglings do get 
yeah, shot at a little bit here. And we are going to try again. Of course, um, yeah, the Mutal is now coming in. The Mutal is kind of weak against the, 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 the Marines. But, well, as long as the Marines get distracted by other things than the Mutal is, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So if he can distract the Marines with his, uh, his Zerplings, then the Zerplings, since they're cheap units, they don't really matter. And you can just suicide them into, well, something like this and just run in with your Mutalis afterwards in the hopes that, um, well, the Marines will not be microed intensely enough and, well, a little bit of a volley, but yeah, he didn't stim his entire thing. He stimmed a couple of them just to take care of those Mutalis. The Mutalis ran out and that was not a problem there. A um, couple of creep tumors getting taken out, and that means that the creep threat is going to recede a little bit. And we are going to go in uh, with a lot of these Widow Mines. Widow Mines strong, of course, against Zerk. And it is, uh, it is just very strong against a lot of things. But especially against Zerk. And, well, with their newly buffed uh, damage against shields, it actually uh, is stronger against Protoss now as well. And look at that, all of these Widow Mines just get to shoot freely. There's two more, and are they going to launch on some? Oh my god, yeah, the Overseer's just completely melting. But Overseer's not really a problem. I mean, yeah, it's sure, they cost some resources, but it's better to lose your uh, your Overseer's than your Mutalist uh, clump. Uh, the, 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 the Widow Mine got out. 18 HP left. Yeah, so he didn't really spot this base yet, uh, at least I think so. Well, although there are no workers there, so maybe he did spot that. So we are going to uh, see a bigger battle now in the middle. If, um, if they can actually manage to do this... The Lyoti. <laughs> um, yeah, the problem is of course the Zerg player really can't just march in here with a big clump of um, of term units in the middle of the map and of course all of these uh, these widow mines that might actually be somewhere on the map and yeah this is not going anywhere he just uh, gives up this base this base was a little bit greedy he couldn't really defend that and uh, well the terror player just sees that and just takes it out no problem the base, of course, uh, will die, and there's really nothing that the Terra, the Zerg player, can get back for that. He does, however, uh, have a nice army for now. Uh, yeah, he does have a decent amount of uh, of mutilus. So I guess he, the only thing he got back from that, was the ability to actually uh, produce some more crap. And oh, he took out one of the widow mines. The other one is still there. That's why he ran in those uh, those banelings. Banelings do splash damage if they get uh, killed, and they will kill the widow mines even though they can't see them. So yeah, no overseers in sight for the moment, so he can't see those uh, those widow mines for now. But yeah, there are no widow mines on the rest of the field. Here is the overseer. It is going to spot this. And now we can actually do this. Wow, the Thor actually gets transported out of there and gets dropped in the middle of the Marines, which means that there is no way they can uh, he can get sniped. But now we have Ultralists, and Ultralists are pretty good against Marines. As you can see, they wipe out the entire Marines' front line. But yeah, too much firepower. He needs to back off, and he's going to try again. But this is not good for our third player. Terror player just completely annihilating everything, but yeah, they do come out ahead slightly, but yeah, look at the medevacs that are still alive, and we even have a Thor that's still alive. It is currently, uh, well, full health, so really no problem. Uh, yeah, new units coming up, and even though the Terran lost his entire ground army there, the medevacs are a big part of the army, and he didn't lose those. So even though I called it for the uh, for the Terran player and the Zerg player seemed to have won, it is those medevacs why I uh, I kind of called him the winner because those medevacs are really important and producing more Marines, yeah, that's like no problem at all. Marines are cheap, 
and they are easy to make, they're fast to produce. So, uh, oh, let me turn on the production tab again. It seems that I have been turning it off. <laughs> yeah, I turned it off because it was like this big and uh, the fight came in and yeah, I wanted to turn it on after the fight, but didn't. Excellent. Anyway, uh, we have a planetary fortress over here and we are going to, uh, well, try to sneak some damage on that, but I don't think he can actually do that. Uh, the Planetary Fortress, of course, is a good defender. And are the Banelings going to land on anything? No, they're not going to land on anything. The, the entire army is coming back, by the way. Yeah, he expected more of an army to be there. But now he's going to march forward. And, uh, well, Terra Player replenished his entire army. Whereas these, um, these Ultralists, yeah, there are only two Ultralists. At least it seems to be. Um, let's see how many, seven ultralists total, but yeah, they are not here, they are not in the front, and we do have some uh, brute lords coming up, the brute lords may actually be a good thing to have, but yeah, look at the amount of damage they take even before they get spawned, and yeah, this is not good, brute lords need to be protected at all costs, because they are super expensive. Yeah, they cannot uh, shoot at the Medifacts, but yeah, this Corruptor can. However, we are going to do some uh, some nice damage. The GG comes in. And yeah, it is because of this, well, this huge army that is still here, of course. Uh, so many Marines that are still alive. These Brute Lords are not going to do anything against us. And yeah, for the rest, he just didn't have it. So yeah, I guess my call on the earlier fight was kind of justified. And um, yeah, Taija wins number one, so that is 1-0 uh, for the Terran. It will be in the bottom here uh, in the next game, so yeah, if you want to skip ahead a few games, just don't watch that bottom part, then you're all fine. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Gigi.